15 brutal ninja weapons you've never heard of. Ninjas, masters of stealth and shadows, wielded weapons so deadly and ingenious that they turned the tide of battle with a flick of the wrist. What mysterious and fearsome tools did these shadowy warriors create, feared by many as instruments of death crafted in the dark? Number 15, Kakute, spiked rings. Kakute are rings made of iron or steel, featuring one to four protruding spikes, and were used by Kunoichi, with occasional use by ninjas. Spike ring. Now, the Kakut was a weapon developed and used by ninjas. These spikes were sometimes coated with poison to increase their lethality. Worn on the middle finger, the spikes of the Kakute were usually hidden within the palm, enabling the wearer to deliver unexpected strikes. The Kakute is a small, unassuming metal ring designed to be worn on one or more fingers, often resembling a simple piece of jewelry. This appearance allows it to blend seamlessly into everyday attire, making it an ideal tool for covert operations. The ring, equipped with one to four sharp spikes, can either be positioned on the inside for applying subtle pressure during grappling techniques, or on the outside for more direct scratching or striking. The Kakude's design was particularly valued by ninjas for its ability to remain hidden in plain sight, unlike larger, more conspicuous weapons. This made it especially useful for undercover missions or assassinations. Female ninjas, or kunoichi, were known to use the kakude, as it could be worn discreetly and used effectively for self-defense or lethal attacks without drawing attention. Today, the kakute occasionally appears in self-defense training within martial arts disciplines like Aikido and Jiu-Jitsu, which focus on grappling and joint manipulation. Though it is not as commonly recognized as other traditional weapons, the Kakuti remains a fascinating example of a concealed weapon that prioritizes control, precision, and stealth. Number 14, Kusarigama, Chain Sickle. It's me again, Japanese traditional weapon. Now I'm gonna show you my new Kusarigama. The Kusarigama is a formidable and captivating weapon that merges the reach and versatility of a chain with the cutting power of a sickle. Its design makes it one of the more complex weapons in Japanese martial arts, requiring a high level of skill and precision to wield effectively. In feudal Japan, the Kusarigama proved invaluable to ninjas and warriors due to its ability to strike from a distance, entangle an opponent's weapon, and incapacitate enemies. This traditional Japanese weapon consists of a sickle attached to a weighted chain, making it a highly adaptable tool for both offensive and defensive maneuvers. The Kusarigama is most commonly associated with ninjas and specific martial arts disciplines, such as ninjutsu and Kusarigama jutsu, where its unique capabilities are expertly employed. The Kama, or sickle, is a combat weapon with a curved blade and a short handle, resembling a traditional farming tool. It is primarily used for cutting, hooking, or slashing during close combat. In battle, the sickle allows for quick, precise strikes to an opponent's limbs or body. The other component of this weapon, the kusari, is a two to three meter long chain attached to the handle of the sickle. The chain is weighted at one end, often with a metal ball or similar object, which can be swung to strike or entangle an opponent. This versatile chain not only allows for strikes from a distance, but can also be used to bind or trap an opponent's limbs or weapon, making the kama a highly adaptable tool in combat. The Kusarigama's unique design, combining a sickle with a swinging chain, requires practitioners to adhere to specific techniques and principles to use it safely and effectively. Mastering the art of anticipating and controlling the chain's trajectory is crucial to avoid self-injury. A Kusarigama user must always be aware of the chain's direction and speed to prevent it from rebounding dangerously after a strike. Developing this skill demands extensive practice, particularly in learning precise swinging techniques that keep the chain from looping out of control. Mastery of these techniques, along with other rigorous training, is essential for the effective use of the Kusarigama. Number 13, Teko, Hand Claws. The Teko, originating from Okinawa, Japan, are weaponized versions of stirrups and horseshoes and are categorized as fist load weapons. These weapons are designed to enhance the mass of the hand, thereby increasing the force of a strike, as the momentum generated is directly proportional to the hand's mass. Similar to many traditional Okinawan weapons, the teko likely began as agricultural tools. Under the strict rule of feudal lords who prohibited peasants from carrying weapons, 
Okinawan farmers adapted everyday items for self-defense. Some historians believe that the earliest teko were created by modifying horse stirrups or farming implements. Wearing teko over the knuckles allowed for concentrated blows, significantly enhancing the force of punches and making strikes far more lethal. The wooden or metal construction of the teko toughened the striking surface and added weight, amplifying the impact. Some teko variants even included spikes or extended blades, enabling the wearer to inflict not only blunt force trauma, but also severe cutting wounds, which could be used to intimidate opponents. Additionally, the teko provided some protection for the wrists and forearms, allowing the user to parry or block attacks with less risk of injury. In the hands of a skilled martial artist, the teko could be used with precision to target vulnerable areas of the body, delivering powerful and accurate strikes. The teko also reinforced the user's grip during grappling or when holding an opponent, offering greater control in close quarters combat. Teko kagi, right hand claw. Um, uh, in some different Ryuha, they call them tiger claw. Number 12, Shikoro, neck blades. The term Shikoro refers to the neck guard attached to the sides and back of a samurai helmet, known as a kabuto. Its primary purpose was to protect the wearer's neck and shoulders from arrows and slashing attacks while allowing for a full range of motion. Typically constructed from overlapping plates of metal or leather, the shikoro was laced together with silk or leather cords, creating a flexible yet durable defense. This design enabled the shikoro to absorb and deflect blows while maintaining the wearer's mobility. In certain situations, the shikoro could also be used for self-defense, especially when a quick response was necessary and more formidable weapons were unavailable. Its compact size made it easily concealable, making it an effective tool for covert operations. This allowed the wearer to approach a target or threat stealthily and deliver a sudden, unexpected strike. Additionally, the shikoro could be used not only for offense, but also for parrying or blocking attacks. Its robust construction allowed it to absorb and deflect blows from other weapons, providing an additional layer of defense. During combat, the often exposed neck area made the shikoro essential for protection. It shielded the neck and extended slightly over the shoulders to guard against downward slashes. Its layered interwoven design enabled it to flex and adapt to the samurai's movements, allowing for full range of motion while still offering protection. Effective use of the shikoro involves mastering the grip and controlling its swing. Users need to maneuver the shikoro adeptly, whether employing it for offensive strikes or defensive maneuvers, ensuring it complements their movements without hindering their agility. Number 11, Shinobi Zue, Hidden Sword Stick. It's, shinobi doesn't always mean ninja. Shinobi, that kanji could also mean concealed. The Shinobi Zu, also known as the Ninja Cane, or Ninja Staff, is a versatile and discreet weapon historically employed by ninjas in feudal Japan. This seemingly ordinary staff or walking stick is designed to conceal a range of hidden weapons, making it an ideal tool for stealth operations. Its inconspicuous appearance allows it to serve effectively in both offensive and defensive roles, blending seamlessly into everyday use while providing the element of surprise in combat. The Shinobi Zue allowed ninjas to move through public areas without attracting attention, as it could easily pass for an ordinary cane or walking staff. This discretion made it invaluable for infiltration and espionage. In close combat, the ninja could use the hidden weapons within the shinobi zue, such as a concealed sword or additional staff, to defend themselves or incapacitate opponents. The staff's length provided versatility, enabling ninjas to deflect attacks or execute long-range strikes. Some versions of the shinobi zue featured weighted ends, allowing it to double as a club or mace for striking. Additionally, the concealed weapons within the cane could be adapted to the mission's requirements, including a short blade for assassination, a blowgun for long-distance attacks, or a rope for climbing. Mastering the Shinobi Zue requires a focus on developing strength, coordination, and a deep understanding of movement. These elements are essential for effectively wielding the weapon. As with any skill, dedicated and prioritized training is necessary to achieve proficiency. Practitioners must commit to rigorous practice to refine their technique and harness the full potential of the Shinobi Zue. Number 10, Yumi, Longbow. Yumi is the Japanese word for bow, specifically referring to the traditional Japanese longbow used in archery. The Yumi is a unique longbow from Japan that stands out for its asymmetrical shape. The Yumi features a longer upper limb and a shorter lower limb than Western bows, allowing for a longer draw length and more force. 
Yuki in the past were constructed of bamboo, wood, and leather. However, contemporary models could employ synthetic materials instead. Usually made with a curved shape, the bow offers a distinctive draw and release system. Yumi has a considerable length, with a range of 2.2 to 2.6 meters. The arrow may be drawn farther, thanks to its considerable length. With this long-range precision, a ninja can target an enemy from a distance and attack quietly. Unlike Western bows, the Yumi has a longer upper limb and a shorter lower limb, which allows for a greater draw length and increased power. This way, striking an opponent with an adequate knowledge of its usage will show more efficiency and discipline. Additionally, the Yumi could be modified to convey coded messages in original ways, especially when used in secret communications or historical warfare. Although it wasn't intended for this use, it might be able to convey sensitive data with the right modifications and strategies. Many martial arts schools in Japan and internationally offer Kyudo, where you can learn the art of using the Yumi under skilled instructors. If you are interested in learning the use of this weapon, it begins with understanding posture, stance, and basic shooting techniques, often starting without the bow to practice form, and other practices can follow. Number 9. Metsubushi Eye Blinder in feudal Japan, samurai police and others used Metsubushi. Uh, one of the more common things that is known is Metsubushi, which are like the eye blinding powders, right? A variety of tools and techniques to temporarily or permanently blind and disorient their opponents. Ninjas also adopted this method for its strategic advantage in combat. Metsubushi is a technique that involves minimal physical exertion to incapacitate adversaries. In the chaos of battle, a ninja could swiftly use eye-blinding tools, often carried discreetly, to impair an enemy's vision. This approach created opportunities to either deliver a decisive strike or make a quick escape, leveraging the element of surprise and confusion to gain the upper hand. One method used by law enforcement for Metsubushi involved a device designed to blow dust or pepper powder into a suspect's eyes. This device typically consisted of a lacquered or brass box with a pipe or hole at one end for directing the powder and a broad mouthpiece for blowing. The powder could include a mix of ashes, finely ground pepper, flour, mud, and soil. In more severe cases, it might contain finely ground glass to cause greater harm. The powder was stored in small containers, such as hollowed out eggs or bamboo tubes. When confronted by an attacker, a person could use this device to disorient them by blowing the Metsubushi powder into their eyes. These devices created thick smoke or fog impairing vision and making it challenging for opponents to see or accurately target their adversaries. Number 8. Fukia Blowgun The Fukia, a traditional Japanese blowgun, is notably used in martial arts, particularly by ninjas. In Japan, the bamboo blowgun, right, it's called a Fukia. This weapon consists of a long, hollow tube through which a practitioner blows to propel small darts, known as Fukibari. Unlike more overt weapons like swords or shuriken, the Fukia is employed for discreet and surprise attacks. The darts can be coated with poison, turning even minor wounds into potentially fatal injuries. Typically measuring between 20 to 40 inches in length, the Fukia allows for long-range strikes with precision. The darts are small, thin, and lightweight, designed for swift and silent flight. For enhanced effectiveness, the tips of these darts can be sharpened and sometimes coated with poison, which can paralyze or kill depending on its potency. This makes the Fukia particularly advantageous for assassination or incapacitation missions. Additionally, it can be used to create diversions. A dart hitting a surface can redirect attention, giving the ninja a chance to escape or reposition. Today, the Fukia is practiced as a traditional martial art in Japan and has also been adapted into a sport. In competitive events, participants focus on accuracy and target shooting following strict rules while using blowguns and darts to aim at designated targets. Number 7. Kyoketsu Shogi Hook, Knife and Rope The Kyokitsu Shoga is a traditional Japanese weapon renowned for its distinctive design and versatility. We're going to work with what's called a Kyoketsu Shoge. It's a, it's a weapon that has a double blade. Making it a favored tool among ninjas. This weapon comprises three main components. A long rope or chain, a double-edged blade, and a curved hook. The long rope or chain, which typically measures between 12 and 18 feet, is attached to the base of the weapon and often features a metal ring or weight at the end. 
This setup allows for the rope or chain to be swung to strike or entangle enemies from a distance, adding a dynamic element to its use. The double-edged blade, positioned prominently, is designed for thrusting, stabbing, and slashing, with one side sharpened for cutting and the other pointed for piercing. The blade's design enhances its effectiveness in close combat by providing both offensive and defensive capabilities. Additionally, a curved hook is affixed near the base of the blade. This hook is instrumental in grappling and disarming opponents, enabling the user to catch and pull away an enemy's weapon or limb, thus gaining a tactical advantage. The Kyuketsu Shogi's complexity necessitates rigorous training to master its use. Its multifaceted nature means that improper handling can lead to self-injury, highlighting the importance of understanding its mechanics thoroughly. Effective use requires skillful movement, including precise footwork, balance, and the ability to transition seamlessly between offensive and defensive actions. Practitioners typically start with a solid foundation in martial arts, such as ninjutsu, which imparts essential stances, movements, and combat principles necessary for mastering the Kyoketsu Shoge. Number 6. Makibishi – Spikes Objects Makibishi, small spiked weapons, were essential defensive tools in feudal Japan, used to slow down or harm enemies. Crafted from iron or spiky bamboo, these pointed objects were designed to be scattered on the ground, where their unique construction ensured that one spike would always point upward, regardless of how they landed. This made them highly effective against both mounted and foot soldiers. Carried in bags attached to belts alongside other commonly used tools like shuriken and kaginawa, makibishi were a versatile addition to a warrior's arsenal. Primarily, makibishi were employed to pierce the feet of enemies, causing pain or immobilization. The sharp spikes could easily penetrate sandals or other soft footwear, inflicting damage and slowing the attacker. Against horses, they were even more devastating, as the spikes could lame the animal, making it difficult for opponents on horseback to continue their pursuit. Beyond their use in combat, makibishi were also strategically scattered in key areas like doorways and entrances to form a defensive barrier. This tactic was particularly effective in hideouts or castles, where it was crucial to prevent intruders from entering. The risk of stepping on the spikes would deter anyone attempting to cross these areas, making surprise attacks less likely. Makibishi's simple yet ingenious design made them a powerful tool for instilling fear and creating obstacles for enemies. By scattering them in strategic locations, warriors could delay an advancing force, aid in their escape, or protect themselves in a vulnerable situation. Their effectiveness, regardless of how they landed, demonstrates the resourcefulness of Japanese warriors who turned these simple objects into vital tools for survival and defense. Whether on a battlefield or in a fortress, Makibishi played a crucial role in the defensive strategies of Japan's past, reflecting the ingenuity that characterized much of the country's martial traditions. Number 5. Kama – Sickle The kama, originally a farming tool used to chop crops like rice, evolved into a formidable weapon with a rich history across Asia. Uh, who talks about the Kusarigama, and uh, apparently it was neither a ninja weapon. It was prevalent in martial arts throughout Southeast Asia, including Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines, and it became especially significant in Japan, where it was adapted from its agricultural roots into a weapon of close combat. Resembling a sickle or billhook, the kama's primary function as a farming implement made it an easily accessible tool, which could be discreetly carried without arousing suspicion. This feature made it particularly useful for ninjas, who were known for their cunning and covert tactics, often hiding the kama under their clothing or among other farming supplies to gain an unexpected advantage over their adversaries. When transformed into a weapon, the kama became highly effective for slashing and cutting in close quarters combat. Its small size allowed for quick, fluid movements, making it ideal for surprise attacks. In martial arts, particularly in disciplines like ninjutsu and karate, the kama is often wielded in pairs. This dual-wielding technique enables the user to defend with one blade while launching an attack with the other. The kama's curved blade also proved valuable for disarming or trapping opponents, as it could catch an enemy's weapon within its curve, giving the wielder control over the situation and potentially freeing the opponent's weapon from their grasp. This capability made the kama especially useful against longer weapons like swords and staffs, where entangling and disabling the opponent's strikes were crucial to gaining the upper hand. Today, the kama remains a staple in martial arts training, particularly within Okinawan martial arts and kabuto. Users are taught slashing techniques, spins, 
and defensive maneuvers that emphasize speed, coordination, and control. Number four, Kaginawa hook and rope. The term Kaginawa is derived from the combination of two Japanese words, Kagi, meaning hook, and Nawa, meaning rope. This grappling hook was used extensively during Japan's feudal era, particularly by the samurai class, their retainers, foot soldiers, and possibly ninjas. The Kaginawa came in various configurations, with some designs featuring as few as one hook and others as many as four. Each hook was typically equipped with three or four sharp curved prongs, enabling it to grip onto a wide range of surfaces, such as walls, tree branches, or rocks. Primarily, the Kaginawa was used as a climbing tool. The user would throw the hooked end onto an elevated surface like a wall or ledge, secure the prongs, and then use the rope to climb. This functionality made the Kaginawa particularly valuable for ninjas engaged in stealthy infiltrations, allowing them to scale structures or strongholds undetected. However, the Kaginawa's utility extended far beyond climbing. Its design allowed for a variety of tactical applications, making it a versatile tool in both offense and defense. I actually aim for the head, but then I train for distance here. In combat, the rope could be swung to disarm or entangle an opponent. The hook, with its sharp prongs, could also be used as a weapon, capable of cutting or throwing an adversary off balance. Additionally, the Kaginawa could be employed to set traps. For example, it could be tied in a concealed location to trip or immobilize an enemy. The Kaginawa's adaptability made it indispensable in numerous scenarios. Ninjas or soldiers could use it to access high places, such as the walls of enemy strongholds, towers, or other elevated structures. In close combat, the Kaginawa could be swung to entangle an opponent's arm, leg, or weapon, making it difficult for them to free themselves and providing the user with an opportunity to strike. Beyond its uses in combat, the Kaginawa was also a tool of survival. It could be employed in rescue operations, such as pulling a fallen ally from a pit, water, or other hazardous areas. In situations where swimming was necessary, a skill ninjas were typically trained in, the Kaginawa could secure boats or aid in quick movement along rugged terrain. Additionally, the hook could retrieve objects or weapons that had fallen into hard-to-reach places. If escape into a body of water was required, the Kaginawa could be used to climb out or facilitate swift navigation through difficult landscapes. The Kaginawa's combination of practicality and versatility made it a critical asset for those engaged in the art of war and survival during Japan's feudal period. Number 3. Shuriken Star Blades. The shuriken, also known by various names such as star blades or throwing stars, is a traditional Japanese weapon once carried by samurai and ninjas. Characterized by its star-like shape, the shuriken typically features multiple sharp, pointed edges arranged in a circular pattern. Crafted from metal, the shuriken comes in various sizes, though it is generally small enough to be concealed in a hand or within clothing, making it an ideal weapon for stealth. Primarily used as a projectile weapon, the shuriken can be hurled with speed and accuracy to disorient, injure, or incapacitate an opponent. While it may not be powerful enough to serve as a lethal weapon on its own, the shuriken excels at disrupting an enemy's movements, making them more vulnerable to follow-up attacks. Beyond its role as a projectile, the shuriken can also be employed in close combat. When held in hand, it can be used for stabbing or slashing, adding to its versatility in battle. Ninjas often utilized the shuriken's utility for more than just direct attacks. For instance, they would throw shuriken against walls or other surfaces to create distractions, producing loud noises that could divert an enemy's attention. Additionally, the edges of the shuriken could be coated with poison, turning even a minor cut into a potentially lethal wound. The shuriken's simple yet effective design and its adaptability in combat made it a crucial weapon for stealth and surprise in traditional Japanese warfare. There are different types of shuriken, each serving distinct purposes. Bow shuriken, for example, are straight, spike-like shuriken that often resemble small darts or nails. These were typically thrown either overhand or underhand and were made from various materials, including wood and metal. Here a shuriken, on the other hand, are flat, star-shaped with multiple sharp points. This more well-known type often features three to eight points and can take on the form of stars, discs, or even crosses. However, it's important to note that shuriken is not legal in all countries. In certain jurisdictions such as Belgium, the Netherlands, Canada, Germany, and the United Kingdom, the sale, distribution, and manufacture of shuriken are prohibited. Those involved in martial arts may be familiar with this weapon, often used to distract or misdirect during combat. 
Despite its small size, the shuriken remains a potent symbol of stealth and precision in martial traditions. Number two, surujin, chain weapons. The surujin, also spelled suruchin or surujing, is a traditional Okinawan weapon classified as a flexible or chain weapon. It is composed of a long rope, chain, or cord with weighted ends, which are often crafted from stone, metal, or wood. The weapon typically measures between five and nine feet in length, with the flexibility of the chain or rope, allowing it to be used in various ways, ranging from entangling opponents to delivering powerful strikes. One of the primary advantages of the surujin is its versatility in both offensive and defensive scenarios. In combat, the weighted ends can be swung with great speed and force, delivering impactful blows to an opponent. The flexibility of the weapon also makes it effective for entangling an opponent's limbs or weapon. Weird chain flail things. The chain or rope can be thrown at an adversary, wrapping around them and restricting their movements, thereby rendering them vulnerable to further attacks. In addition to its offensive capabilities, the surujin can be employed defensively. With proper technique, the chain or rope can be used to block or deflect attacks. By absorbing the force of an incoming strike or redirecting a weapon away from the user, the surujin serves as an effective tool for protection. However, the weapon requires careful handling, as its speed and force can be dangerous if not properly controlled. Mastery of the surujin involves not only learning to wield it with precision, but also developing an understanding of its potential risks. In skilled hands, the surujin is a powerful and adaptable weapon, reflecting the ingenuity of Okinawan martial traditions. Number one, Tetsubishi, Iron Spikes. Tetsubishi, also known as caltrops, are traditional Japanese weapons characterized by their distinctive design of iron spikes, arranged to ensure that no matter how they land, one spike always points upward. These devices were commonly used by samurai and ninja to hinder or injure pursuers during combat or while making an escape. Typically, Tetsubishi feature four sharp spikes, strategically crafted to penetrate the foot of anyone unfortunate enough to tread on them, effectively slowing down or immobilizing an opponent. The design of Tetsubishi shares similarities with other historical caltrop weapons used across different cultures, demonstrating the universal need for simple yet effective tools in warfare. Traditionally made from steel or iron, Tetsubishi were compact, lightweight, and easily concealable. In certain areas where they suspected ninjas, making them an ideal choice for ninjas who required stealth in their operations. In some instances, the spikes were coated with poison to increase their lethality, ensuring that even a minor injury could prove dangerous. Ninjas often utilized Tetsubishi during retreats, scattering them to create a barrier between themselves and their enemies, buying crucial time to escape or reposition. The simplicity of their design belied their effectiveness, as they could be quickly deployed to disrupt the pursuit of foes, particularly in narrow passageways or along escape routes. While Tetsubishi are no longer employed in modern combat, they are still used in some martial arts training and exhibitions, preserving their historical significance. The modern equivalent, known as caltrops, is still utilized by law enforcement and military agencies to stop vehicles or impede enemy movements, highlighting the enduring utility of this ancient weapon. Tetsubishi exemplify the resourcefulness and tactical acumen of the samurai and ninja, who relied on such tools to gain an advantage in combat. Their ability to slow down or injure opponents with minimal effort made them a valuable asset, especially during retreats or ambushes. The enduring legacy of Tetsubishi as a simple but effective weapon speaks to their importance in the history of Japanese martial arts and warfare. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in our next video.